I'm Anil Kumar and here is an application of Rolle's theorem. Proof that the equation x cubed plus x minus 3 equals to 0 has exactly one real root. You can pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Now we'll do it in two parts. In part one, we will show that it has a root. So first part will show that it has a root, right? That is the first part. And then in the second part, we'll show that it has only one root, right? One real root, okay? So that is how we are going to uh, answer this question. Now, how do we show that it has a root at least one root I should have written anyway so what we are given here is let us say a function is given to us as x cube plus x minus 3 now as I said it's an application of Rolle's theorem then let's consider the three critical things which should be satisfied by this equation also now anyway we'll look into it later Okay, first let's prove that it has at least one root. So if I place f0, if I write 0 for x, I get 0 plus 0 minus 3. So we get a negative 3 value. And uh, if I write, let's say 2, f of 2, I get 2 q plus 2 minus 3 which is 8 plus 2 10 minus 3 is plus 7. So what we notice here is that the value changes from minus 3 to 7, right? We know it's a polynomial which is continuous, right? So as we see, this is a continuous polynomial. And if the value is changing from negative to positive, minus 3 to 7, it will go through origin, right? So that means it will have at least one real 0. Is that okay? One real 0. Now, some of you who have done intermediate value theorem, they can use that theorem also. So at times we use this theorem, which is intermediate value theorem. It makes sense since we have a continuous function between two values, all the values will be covered. Is that okay? Since uh, zero is between minus 3 and 7, it will cross through 0. So it will have a 0, at least 1, right? So in this fashion, we have proved that it has at least one root, right? So we have proved that it has at least one real root. Okay. Now let's get back to the second part. We want to know that it is exactly one real root now. So to prove that it has exactly one real root, we'll start with uh, like contradiction, right? So we'll start with contradiction and we'll say, uh, let it have two real roots, right? And let these reads be at uh, at x equals to a and at x equals to b, right? So let us assume that it has not one but two, more than one, that is to say. So let it have two real roots. So one at a, the other one is at b, right? We know it is a continuous function. And uh, between a and b, we are saying that the value at a will be zero. And since it has a root at b also, then f of b is also zero, right? Since we are taking two roots, so since they are real roots. Now we have fa equals to fb, right? So we have fa 
equals to fb and both are equal to 0. So now we can apply the Rolle's theorem. So what we have here is all the three conditions met. So the first condition met is that the function is continuous. Second is that it is differentiable. And the third is that f a equals to f b, right? So a and b are any two points, which we don't know, but let us assume these are the roots, right? So these three conditions are met. Now, if that is true, then what can we conclude from Rolle's theorem? Then we can conclude that there is a point C so that f dash C is equal to zero, right? So that is what is Rolle's theorem. Correct? So if it has two roots, in that case, derivative of this function should be zero for at least one point, right? C. So let's find out this point. Okay. So we are given f of x as equals to x cubed plus x minus 3 f prime x. The derivative will be 3x squared plus 1, right? Now as you see this, 3x squared plus 1. Now this term is always positive. 3x squared is always positive and we are adding 1 to it. So, so we know that this function is never going to be 0. It is always greater than or equal to 1, correct? Now, from here we can say, since the derivative is not equal to 0, our assumption is wrong. So the assumption is that it has two roots, right? So which is wrong, right? So from contradiction, we can prove, so this implies that, that the given equation has exactly one real root, right? Because we know it has one root at least since it is going from a negative value to positive value. So like this, we can actually apply the Rolle's theorem and show that it has exactly one root. I hope that helps. I'm Anil Kumar. You can share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.